Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever. On today's show, we're going to continue our series on flex cord welding. I'm going to be welding the NR232 style wire, and I'm going to be doing it vertically today, which can oftentimes be a challenge. So stick with me. Here we go. Let's get right into it. Okay, as you can see, I have a cruciform set up here. That's what we're going to use today to perform these welds. Now, as you can see, here is the flux core gun. And for your information, I'm using 072 NR232 flux cord uh, wire. Uh, my uh, wire feed speed is going to be set to 155, and my voltage is going to be set to 21 and a half volts. All right. Notice I'm going to start with the gun angle slightly downward. And in addition to that, my stick out here is going to be much closer than it should be. Now, the recommended stick out for this wire by the manufacturer is between three quarters of an inch and one inch. Okay. The very beginning of the weld, uh, it has been taught to me, and I like to do this, I find it to be successful, that you should get the uh, stick out to be a little shorter than that so that you can get things started. And as you begin, you should wiggle back and forth just to get the puddle going so that you don't punch through the metal because this stuff is very hot and that can happen very easily. Once you get the puddle established and you get the slag starting to form behind you, then you can start to uh, ease out and get your stick out to the uh, normal uh, <clears throat> three quarters to an inch. Okay, then you're going to notice as I progress, my I still have my downward angle. And I try to maintain that the entire time, but I will tell you in all honesty, uh, you know, being a human being, we're all fallible. And sometimes that angle ends up drifting the other way, and I end up at a 90 degrees or sometimes even at a push. But fortunately, um, with experience and after you do this for a while, uh, even when that happens, things usually are okay. If you notice here, uh, the slag came off very easily, so I'm real happy about that. So despite any potential problems, which by the way, I think my stick out was probably a little too short on that one. Despite that, everything seems to work out well. It flattened out and the edges look well fused. Okay, So now I'm going to go ahead and start the next uh, bead. And uh, same procedure, get it nice and tight in there closer stick out than uh, you're going to have at the end or as you get going I should say and if you'll notice from the camera shots it's going to look like I have a real unsteady hand like maybe I've drunk too much coffee today or something and I'm nervous but the reality is that I like to do a little bit of a wiggle I have found that a wiggle really helps to settle things down and keep the slag at bay and what I mean by that is that the slag system on this particular wire wants to always constantly come around the sides and end up on the top there in front of you. And it's a dangerous thing because once it comes around like that, it's very prone to becoming entrapped on the toes of the weld. So you have to really try to keep that slag at bay behind you. And I found that the wiggling uh, as you travel helps to do that. It's almost the same principle as when you're watering your driveway. Uh, if you wiggle the stream, it just kind of keeps everything in place. It's kind of the same principle I have found. Okay, uh, so far so good. If you notice, the uh, slag is already peeling there, and it's going to take not too much to take it off. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, in all honesty, I do not profess to be an expert at uh, flux core welding here. Not, not NR232, anyhow. Uh, I learned how to do this uh, some time ago. Uh, I had thought that I would probably use this in industry, but as it turns out, I never really did. Uh, however, I'm glad that I did learn it because it now helps me with students and I'm able to uh, you know, teach them the rudimentary facts and techniques about it to get them going. And then, of course, as you know, once you get out into the field, you get all kinds of, if you're going to do this type of work, you're going to do it day in and day out and uh, students are able to perfect their techniques at that point. I, on the other hand, uh, know it enough to be able to uh, do it, to teach it, and to demonstrate it, but uh, I am in no way an expert. I do not do this every day for a living. 
So I just want to make that disclaimer out there in case there's some pros out there watching that say, hey, what's wrong with you? You're, <laughs> you're doing it all wrong or, boy, that's lousy technique. Well, listen, <laughs> I'm giving myself an out here, okay? I'm not, uh, I don't regularly do this, so I'm doing the best I can. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, I'm going to just continue uh, welding here and demonstrating what's going on for the purpose of uh, you guys taking it all in. I've changed lenses here in the hopes that maybe we get a better shot of it, and it looks like it's a little bit clearer. But in either case, uh, it's just a gradual progression upward. Another thing I want to share with you is uh, it's been said that you shouldn't hold the sides or the toes of the weld very long. And usually uh, it's in reference to the way you hold like the toes of the weld for like a 7018, for example. And a 7018, of course, you're going to, and this is an SMAW electrode I'm referring to, an E7018 electrode. You're going to hold the sides of the, you know, for a long amount of time. You're going to hold the sides so that you can get good fusion. Uh, on this, however, you're not going to hold them for that length of time. You're going to kind of move at a quicker rate. Uh, because holding it too long actually causes some problems there. But I will say this. I don't want to give anybody the impression that you shouldn't hold at all in the sides. Because I think that there is a, a little bit of a necessary pause that has to take place. I wish I could give you a more exact definition of how long. But this is really a heavily, uh, this is really heavy on technique. And the only way to get that technique is through constant practice. You've got to get the feel for this in order to learn and to kind of figure out how your technique is going to go. So if you're interested in doing this or you're studying to do this uh, and you're learning, it's practice, practice, practice. It's what you have to do. I wish there were some better explanation I could have for you, but I don't know of too many people that could explain it any better than that. You just really have to do it in order to get the feel for it. Okay, uh, after this one here, we've got one more uh, round to go. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I'm not exactly an expert at this, but uh, I did it because I've had so many requests from viewers to uh, do this, particularly welding students. And so I'm very hopeful that this has helped you in some small way, that perhaps maybe it's uh, provided some information or some insight. I want to add one other thing that if you are doing this and you are having trouble, my ultimate uh, tip is to make sure that you don't fluctuate your wire speed and your voltage. Keep it constant the whole time. Remember, I'm running at 155 and 21 and a half and just keep working on that technique. I see so many students getting into this, falling into this trap where they keep trying to adjust settings, adjust settings, adjust settings, and they end up just basically chasing their tail. So pick a setting and stick to it, and then go from there and work on your technique, and you should be fine, okay? Well, anyhow, I guess that's uh, probably going to about end this one here. So uh, thank you very much. I want to remind you that I have an Instagram account. It's uh, Instagram slash WeldFever. And I post a lot of pictures. Usually I post a picture of the upcoming project and it kind of gives you a hint. So check that out. Give us a thumbs up here if you liked it. And thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.